for coming tonight. What an exciting event and what an exciting occasion. This is our first City Managers Town Hall and I want to welcome all of you to City Hall tonight for our conversation. I do have some slides prepared to go through about city operations and then we'll answer questions that were submitted in advance as well as have an open question and answer session at the end of tonight's conversation. I would ask you to keep your questions until we get to the end though so that we can make sure we get through the materials. We did have uh, limited copies available and there were a few that Amy handed out earlier. Amy, wave your hand. If you did not get a copy of it, have no fear, there is a copy online that we have uploaded to the city's website. If you go, if you have your device with you tonight and you'd like to follow along on that, you can go to winchesterva.gov and click on the city manager's page and access the slides for tonight. So without further ado, I typically start conversations like this talking about Winchester because if you've lived here in Winchester a long time or even if you're a recent transplant to the area, Winchester has changed dramatically, especially in the four and a half years that I've been a resident here in Winchester. Our current population estimate puts us at 27,932, which is pretty much on par with Fredericksburg and Stanton, which are two of our closest competitors, if you want to think of it that way, in terms of independent cities in the Commonwealth. We are 9.3 square miles, and we are landlocked by Frederick County. We operate in a council manager form of government, and I'll give you additional information when we get further in the presentation about what exactly that means. Our budget for fiscal year 2019, which is our current fiscal year, is $251 million. And our general fund is $93 million. Schools make up a separate $69 million of that. And capital improvements nearly $11 million. We are extremely fortunate here in Winchester to have a number of major employers, which make our community so rich and diverse. Our major employers that you see listed here on the screen, we're also very fortunate to count them among our partners that we work with almost on a daily basis. That ranges from Winchester Medical Center as our number one employer in terms of size, through Continental, formerly O'Sullivan Films, Shenandoah University, National Fruit, the city school system, and the city itself. Uh, as of Monday, the city had 528 full-time employees. That does not count the school system. That's a separate number. Winchester is also very fortunate to have been recognized nationally in a number of ways over the last few years. I was very happy that over the last couple of years we received the 26th consecutive Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. For us numbers nerds like I am, that means that our audit, our CAFR, our Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, was it met the standard and it received that Certificate of Excellence. We also received the sixth consecutive GFOA Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. Those are a little more challenging to get because you have to tie the numbers in your budget back to performance measures. And if any of you are ever interested in learning more about our budget, you can ask me at any time, but also Mary Blow, our CFO, is here, and I think she has her trusty budget book with her tonight, if anyone has questions about that. And we'll talk some more about budget as well. Winchester Fire and Rescue also, in 2018, received the Mission Lifeline Gold Plus EMS Award for cardiac resuscitation rates. And WPD, Winchester Police Department, was reaccredited by the state. We had improved ISO ratings, where we went from a three to a two in the public protection classification, and also from building code perspective, from a three to a two for multifamily developments, and a, we stayed a three for single family or duplex construction. That number translates to real money in your pocket as property owners, because that can help lower insurance premiums in the city by having a better rating on that number. We were also ranked the number 13 small metro area in the country, not just in Virginia. Number four MSA for Site Selection Magazine, and you see the list goes on and on. Many of you are likely aware that the city and our surrounding region has been widely recognized as a great place to retire. And I am very proud of that designation because we want our senior citizens to have a thriving community here to invest in and to be part of, along with our younger residents. 
One of the recognitions some of you may not have heard about, but last year, John Hanley High School was recognized as the most beautiful public high school in Virginia. And that's something I think all of us can understand and be proud of. Earlier, I mentioned that the city operates under a council manager form of government. And people often ask me, well, what, what does that really mean? The bottom line for that, or the bluff, as I tell my team all the time, the bottom line up front, is that council sets policy, they are the elected officials, and council in, term, in turn hires a professional manager, a trained individual who manages the daily operations of the staff and ensures that council's policies are being carried out, as well as ensures that we have balanced budgets and they, we are in compliance with all laws and regulations. So, in a nutshell, it more or less means that the buck stops with me. If you have an issue, it's my job to fix that. And I certainly do my best every day to resolve concerns that our residents have. People sometimes also say, well, does the manager, can the manager be fired? Well, absolutely. I work at the, con at the pleasure of council, and I can be fired at any time by a majority vote of council. I'm very fortunate that we have a wonderful council here in Winchester who supports our staff as as well as, my, as me in the operations of the city. I am also a ICMA credentialed manager. That's the International City County Management Association. And that means that I adhere, adhere to a code of ethics and I also have to meet certain education and training requirements on a three-year basis. What you see on the screen, I realize the font's a little bit small there, but that's the code of ethics that I must comply with. Just like realtors have a code of ethics, doctors have a code of ethics, city and county managers have a code of ethics to comply with as well. When I first joined the city about four and a half years ago, my team asked me, well, what do you expect of us? We, you know, you, we, you're this unknown quantity. You've moved here from Georgia. We don't know anything about you. We can tell you're Southern by your accent, but we really don't know a lot about what you expect of us. And I thought about it, and I put this document out, and I wanted to get to larger font so you could see it here. This really drives how we interact as a team and how our staff works together and how we manage our staff. Our number one value that I have and I've passed on to our team is that customer service is our business. You are our customers, and you're going to judge us by our ability to respond to the needs of the community and we work hard every day to meet the needs that you have told us you have and that council has set priorities for us. Secondly, collaboration and partnerships, both within and outside our organization, are essential to the success of the city of Winchester. We place an emphasis on being inclusive and working to build relationships, and we actively seek out partnerships in order to fully leverage our limited resources because we realize that the city can't do everything on its own, nor should we. We don't function in a vacuum, therefore we have to work with others to make our community better. Third, well thought out and achievable plans are the key to the future of our organization. Planning is essential, and I confess I am a nerd, even when being a nerd was not popular, but I'm also the type of person that I like to make a list so that I can check things off. And I think a lot of you in the audience are probably similar to that. You realize that by having those plans, it allows you to see what your progress has been. Fourth, we will run an open and transparent government. People respect an organization that is proactive and providing timely and accurate information regardless of the topic. Public relations and the timely flow of information are essential to developing and maintaining the trust of our community. That is not just a word to us. Transparency filters through everything that we do here at the city. And in a few minutes, I'll show you a lot of the steps that we have taken to improve transparency and to give you greater insight into how your city functions and what your finances look like, how your taxpayer dollars being used. For people on my team, if they manage other people, I expect them to take care of the employees that work for them. Get to know that person. Find out what motivates them. Find out who their family is. Find out what they want to do. If they want to be an administrative assistant all their career, that's wonderful. We want them to be the very best administrative assistant they can be. 
but if they want to progress, we want to give them those growth opportunities so that they can grow and be even more of a contributor, even Winchester or beyond. Next, you are responsible for your actions. My team gets tired of hearing me say this, but I often uh, tell them that, remember, no matter where you are, you represent the city of Winchester, and you should comport yourself accordingly. Doesn't matter if you're in Winchester, if you're in Washington, D.C., if you're in a foreign country, you still represent the city of Winchester. Every employee is equally important to the success of our city and our government. We're all part of one team, and I expect everyone on our team to take ownership of your part to improve the organization. Not just supervisors, not just managers, but everybody that works for the city is a leader at their own level, and they have to take responsibility for that. Finally, mistakes are tolerated, but negligence and carelessness is not. Unfortunately, there can, be a, there can be consequences for actions, but by having these ground rules, everyone knows the expectations and we're all allowed to work together to make Winchester the best that it can be. A few years back, we uh, had a consultant who came in and worked with us. Actually, you may remember him, Craig Gerhardt. He was the interim city manager here a couple of times, and Craig's the retired uh, Prince William County Executive, and he came in and he worked with our senior leadership team, and they developed this leadership philosophy. This is not my leadership philosophy. This is what our senior leadership team came up with, and it's a very powerful statement about what their expectations are. I do want to read parts of this to you because I think it is that important. We are a team of dedicated public servants motivated, motivated by the desire to make Winchester the best city in the country. And I think we're well on the way to that. Every member of our team has an equally valued voice and is empowered with the authority to make appropriate decisions and has the duty to take responsibility for their actions. We believe a mutually respectful, collaborative, and trusting environment provides the best opportunities for growth and recognition of achievement. And finally, we value open communication, diversity, honesty, creativity, and innovation. We are all leaders striving to provide the highest level of service to the people we serve. That's pretty powerful to me, especially as a, as a government employee. I can embrace that, and I do embrace that, and I know every member of our team does embrace that. And there's folks here tonight that you'll be interacting with a little bit more, so you'll get to spend a little bit more time with our senior leadership team. Beginning with the council retreat in January of 2015, council adopted a very robust strategic plan that built upon the prior versions of the strategic plan and revised our mission and vision statement. Our mission and vision statement you see on the screen, and typically it would hang on the wall right there below the air-conditioned vent, but we haven't had a chance to hang it back up after the new vent was put in from the renovations. It's throughout City Hall, it's throughout all of our offices, so that our team sees what the priorities are that have been set by council, and they have a good sense of how they help the city achieve those goals, that mission, and that vision. Our mission is to provide a safe, vibrant, sustainable community while striving to constantly improve the quality of life for our citizens and economic partners. And our vision is to be a beautiful, vibrant city with a historic downtown, growing economy, great neighborhoods with a range of housing options and easy movement. The mission and vision, in turn, were used to formulate the strategic plan goals. I'm not going to read all of these to you know that you can get a copy of our strategic plan if you would like to have it. I actually have my copy right here tonight. But we also report to council on a semi-annual basis our progress towards accomplishing these goals. The most recent progress report was done in July, and once we get through the next couple of slides, I'll pull that up and show you what it looks like. Our first goal is to encourage sustainable economic growth and partnerships through business and workforce development. Revitalizing and strengthening Winchester's economy is critical to our future, especially as an independent city. Goal two 
is to promote and accelerate revitalization of catalyst and other sites and other areas throughout the city. Ward Plaza, National Fruit, those are some examples of catalyst sites. Um, Federal Mogul as well. Goal three, to enhance the quality of life for all Winchester residents by increasing cultural, recreational, and tourism opportunities, enhance and maintain our infrastructure, and promote and improve public safety. And finally, goal four is our more inward looking goal, which is to improve city services and advance the strategic plan goals by promoting a culture of transparency, efficiency, and innovation. On the city's website at winchesterva.gov, government slash strategic plan, and again, you'll have this online that you can look at later, you can download a copy of our performance measures and our full plan, as well as take a look at our transparency portal, OpenGov, and look at all of our progress here. These screenshots that you see on the uh, screen here are actually our progress towards three selected measures. The first one is uniform crime reporting. The middle one, the number of crisis intervention team certified officers, and then the number of traffic crashes during the current year. As I mentioned earlier, the city is extremely fortunate to have a number of partnerships and partners with community organizations, other governments, authorities. We have a lengthy list. This is just a sampling of the groups that we work with on a regular basis to improve our community and to improve the quality of life here in Winchester. In addition, many of our members or many of our team are members of associations so that we can research and bring back best practices that are in place in other communities across the country and put them to practice here in Winchester, including the Virginia Municipal League, Virginia First Cities, the International City County Management Association, the Virginia Main Street Association, the National League of Cities, GFOA, and the City County Communications and Marketing Association. One of the areas that we work really hard to improve interactions with our community is through communication and outreach. How many of you get city news? Comes out on Thursdays. Many of you do. If you don't get city news, Amy has a sign-up sheet that you can sign up for that so that you can get that. It's a quick email. We will never spam you. We will never sell your email address. So if you don't get it, I strongly encourage you to sign up for it where you can find out the latest news about what's going on in the city. Parks and Recreation also has the Parks Activity News that details information about upcoming park programs. We also have a very active presence on social media with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Personally, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with social media. There are many blessings and curses that can be found with it but for getting information quickly out to our residents, it really has turned out to be a great help for us. Our city website has been awarded an award of excellence by the City County Man Marketing and Communications Association, 3CMA. And on Monday of each week, we publish the City Manager's Week in Review, which if any of you are, are feeling bored and you would like to know how many potholes we repaired last week, how many water main lines we repaired, how many sidewalks we fixed, you can download that on Mondays and get all of the information. It's typically a, an eight to 11 page document. It just depends on what we had happening in the city that week. That's real time information and it is quick and it comes out to you so that you can see exactly what we're doing. We also have the Everbridge notification system. How many of you have signed up for that? Not everybody. That's another one that I would encourage you strongly to sign up for if you do not already receive it. We use that to send out emergency notifications and you can customize your enrollment so that you only receive emergencies or you can receive optional notifications such as when we activate a snow plan, when a street is closing, which is a new one that we'll be adding soon, if it's going to be closed for a special event or for other utility work that may be happening. You can also find out if your trash day has been changed or if there's a schedule change that week. You can sign up to get it as a phone call, an email, a text, or all three of them. 
and that works extremely well because it is based on your address that you register. So it is direct and impacts only where you are. We also have Comcast Cable Channel 6. You can watch city council meetings on that. You can also find out information about open jobs with the city, open board and commission positions that are available. And you can also look at information on parks programs and a host of other info. We have a mobile app that we rolled out about two years ago, which is really excellent because it also includes a knowledge base that is a list of frequently asked questions. For example, if you want to know when your dog tag is due every year and you don't have the time to necessarily call or if it's after hours and you'd like to know that information, you can go to the mobile app or go to the website and you can type in the question and get the information right there at your fingertips. If for some reason the question is not answered in the mobile app, it will send a message to us and we will answer the question and send you the information back. You can also use the mobile app to request a fix, a sidewalk fix, a pothole fix, whatever the issue may be. And if you set up an account, we will send you notifications about the status of the repairs that are being made. We also now have a new TV show that is being uh, produced by our communications department with Mr. Barry Lee called Publicity. We've had four episodes so far. We've talked about things such as fences with Aaron Grisdale. We've talked about water meter replacements with Perry Eisenach. And we've got a number of new episodes coming out. Finally, we have a lot of publications. They include our annual report, they include our budget in brief, which is a simple layman's guide to the budget so that you can just basically get the facts of the budget. We also have an annual informational calendar. And in, if any of you are photographers, I would encourage you to submit pictures of Winchester taken within the city limits, please, to Amy from all seasons. And they may be featured as one of the shots in the calendar that will come out for 2019. That calendar includes information on meetings. You can find out when City Council will be meeting, when the school board will be meeting, when Planning Commission, BAR, all of those entities will be meeting. We also have park program guides for the Parks and Rec Department, Old Town Shopping and Dining Guide, and the Winchester Frederick County Visitors Guide. To continue our communication and outreach, we are very proud of the Insight Citizens Academy, which is offered once per year from January to April. And it is an in-depth program where you really get to see behind the scenes of the city operation. And I think I see a few faces in the crowd that have graduated from the Insight Academy. And would y'all recommend doing the Insight Academy? Absolutely. Wonderful. So please join us. We'll be taking registrations for that. And Amy actually has the schedule and the sign-up sheet for the 2019 session over here on the table. I hope some of you will decide to join us for that session this year. We also do a, a citizen survey every three years. The last survey was done in 2017, and we saw dramatic improvements in citizen satisfaction across the board, especially in public safety and in infrastructure. Our knowledge base we've talked about, and I'm also extremely proud of what our public safety team has been working on to more engage with the community. Coffee with a Cop is coming up soon. If any of you have time on October 3rd, I'd encourage you to go out and spend some time with some of our amazing police officers. They'll be at Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, Moe's, Steamy's. And you can get out and talk to our officers who are on the street. And then to help engage kids, we also have Color with a Cop, where you can come out and color with them. You actually don't have to be a kid. You could be an adult if you enjoy coloring. Sometimes coloring can be cathartic and help release some stress. So you can come and do that on November 6th. We have a Police Citizens Academy in the fall of every year, Teen Citizens Academy, and this year we launched the Junior Academy for the first time. We'd had so much request for doing something for our little biddies that to get them engaged with police officers and to see what law enforcement is like, and it was a huge hit. They really enjoyed, we had a waiting list, and we're getting ready to start the next one. The volunteers in policing program are an amazing asset to the city and they really help us take our patrol officers and allow them to focus on serving the community while they can help us with tasks such as um, manning, patrol, uh, excuse me, manning traffic so they can direct traffic for us. It really is a tremendous help. 
CERT, the Community Emergency Response Team, the Community Response Team, the Community Safety Fair, which was just held a couple of weeks ago, Timbrook Tim Food and Toy Drive every Christmas season, and then the Stuff a Truck season, which Winchester Fire and Rescue operates for us. I mentioned earlier about government transparency, and over the last few years, we have invested a lot of time and energy into putting additional information right at your fingertips, including agenda management and live streaming of council meetings. If you are unable to join us for a council meeting, and I always encourage people to come to council meeting and see what happens during a council meeting, you can log on from anywhere in the world, literally anywhere in the world, and you can watch the council meeting as long as you have a web browser and you can access the internet. You can also go back and search through. There is a very robust search feature there, and you can search by topic, by individual council member, by the city manager's name to find out whatever was hap what happened or what was said because minutes are also recorded in the same place. We're still in the process of rolling out all of our boards and commissions, but Planning Commission already uses that, as does our new OPEB board and a couple of others. Our budget transparency tool is something that we are very proud of and we're one of the few governments in Virginia that already operates that function, which is something that the General Assembly has kicked around requiring governments to do for the last few years. We allow you to have real-time access to the city's checkbook. So if you want to check and see how much money was spent on a specific function last month, last year, last <coughs> fiscal year, you can check and you can pull that information out. If you have questions about how to use OpenGov, Mary and the finance team are our experts on that and they can walk you through exactly how to use that. We've received lots of great feedback, especially from bond rating agencies and banks about how much they like to have that information there. We also have the stories function of OpenGov, which is what we use to report our progress on our strategic plan goals, as well as put information out there about our current projects, which we have a list of current projects coming up in just a moment. We have an online portal now for Freedom of Information Act requests so that we can track them and make sure that we get information back to you in a timely fashion. And we also have a new property search portal that you see a screenshot of down at the bottom. In addition to telling you the tax information on that property, you can also find out your city council district, your fire station, your fire first due, your voting ward that you're in, your trash zone, what day your trash pickup is, all of that information is readily available for you. Now, let's go through a list of our current and upcoming projects. We have a lot going on, as you can see from the list here. You've already seen some of the City Hall renovations. We don't have restrooms on this floor, and if anyone does need restrooms tonight, they are available on the first floor and on the fourth floor, just so you know where they are. We hope to be finished with the third floor by early October. And then there are a few things left to do on this floor, and we'll be able to have a, a wonderful open house to get everybody back into the building. We discovered so many hidden things that had been covered up with the 1986 renovation. A staircase that no one knew was actually behind the wall, and it is absolutely beautiful. It's amazing that it survived with no damage. There are many other features, including some columns in the basement and on the, the third floor that had been covered up with drywall that are original to the building and are being exposed so that everyone can see the history that is here in this building. We're also working on Wentworth Drive sidewalks, Valley Avenue improvements, which will solve a lot of the stormwater issues that we're experiencing in that area, as well as provide sidewalks in that area. Hope Drive extension, Tevis Street improvements, Many of you have probably already heard about Crossover Boulevard, the new name of Tevis Street Extension, which will ultimately cross over into Frederick County and will provide us with another east-west outlet out of the city, hopefully taking some pressure off of 50 where it crosses at um, Shenandoah University and Costco on the other side. Burn building construction will be hopefully starting on that pretty soon. Even though our website won an award, we are still trying to do better and are working on redesigning the website. We are working with the Hanley Library Board as well as the Hanley Board of Trustees on some renovations to Hanley Library, a new HVAC system, and some uh, structural enhancements to the building. 
We're resurfacing the tennis courts and the basketball courts in Jim Barnett Park. The Winchester Towers lot has some exciting news that was just announced earlier today and they have named two development partners that they will be working on developing an MOU with for the redevelopment of that site with the goal of having an MOU in place at the October meeting but definitely at a, a meeting coming soon and they are Lynx Ventures and Matchbox. We also, uh, the EDA is working on Piccadilly and Kent redevelopment project. We have a huge project ongoing with water meter and sidewalk replacements throughout the city. Winchester is fortunate, and I say that seriously, to have the third oldest public water system in the country. But what that also means is that we have an aging water infrastructure that has to be repaired. What we are doing is we are repairing and installing new water meters. We are also fixing sidewalks in those areas. So you will see a lot of work over the next few years on sidewalks throughout the city. That does not mean that all of the sidewalks will be repaired, but we do have some solutions that we're working on trying to get all of them fixed. Unfortunately, sidewalks in a city as old as Winchester are a very, very costly item. And we estimate that we have about $20 million in sidewalk improvements alone, which is a really big number for our budget. We also have Kent Street and Woodstock Lane improvements, which are going to dramatically change the, landscape, the streetscape in that area. Those will be starting very, very soon. Green Circle Trail for the final phase, phase three and the final phase. Phase three goes from the current ending point near where Daily Grind used to be on Jubal Early and will take it down to connect to where the new apartments are at the corner of Jubal Early and Valley Avenue. And then the final phase will take it from that point and cross over the railroad tracks and connect to the end point at Shenandoah University. Boscowan Street improvements are an item that's going to be coming back before council in the retreat earlier this year. They asked staff to bring back some design options and potentially have a public open house after council takes a look at those again. Those improvements would potentially involve the closing of Boscowan Street because of safety concerns. That's a topic that will be coming up more on that soon. The Old Town Safety Bollards, unfortunately, it seems to be a, factor of, a fact of life these days that anytime you have a vibrant pedestrian area, you have public safety concerns. And Council in the last budget approved funding for safety bollards at the north and south end of the pedestrian mall. We are working on getting those installed this winter so that they will be operational before Apple Blossom when we have our biggest crowds downtown because we certainly don't want anyone in a vehicle or something else to try to drive down the pedestrian mall. They will be sliding bollards, so if you press a button, they will open up and you won't have to have someone come out and actually move them. Open data, we are working on rolling out a new part of OpenGov, which will provide additional data on building permits, other in fire and rescue, police calls for service in one easy place so that you can have the information and hopefully we can start using that to analyze and identify trends where additional services are needed. Parks maintenance building, gateway and wayfinding signage, street repaving, which is starting very soon for this fiscal year, additional sidewalks in the CDBG grant program, and then the ladder truck, which has been ordered and we hope will be here in the next few months. Some recent projects that we've completed, body-worn cameras for our police officers. They're in the process of rolling those out to all of our officers. The EDA adopted and City Council endorsed an economic development strategic plan for the future of the city. Online utility bill payments. Phase two of the Green Circle Trail, which is the portion that runs behind Kent Street, South Kent Street, along Town Run. And if you haven't had the opportunity to walk back there, I encourage you to walk that section. It is absolutely beautiful and you would never know that you are in a bustling city based on walking back there. It seems like you're just in a nice little quiet wooded area when you're walking. Tethys Street, we talked about earlier. The city has completed our portion from the, the what was the, the prior end of the street to I-81. Frederick County is in the process of getting ready to finish their part, excuse me, to start their part of the project. We finished the FY18 repaving. We talked about the, satisfa the citizen satisfaction survey 
And then also this year, we resurfaced the outdoor pool, which is the reason why it was a little bit late opening this season. We had some rain. I think everyone can agree that we had a bit of rainy weather this year. Budget process is something that takes a lot of time within the city. And it's something that really drives a good bit of our operations, if not the majority of it. If you couple the budget with the strategic plan, that, those are the driving documents for the city. And we begin our budget discussions for the next fiscal year, and we operate on a July 1 to June 30 fiscal year. We begin those discussions internally in October. In November, we send out the request to the departments and to our attached agencies. And my guidance to them is always be reasonable, but be realistic in your budget requests. It's a, it's a sad fact of life that we never have enough money to do everything that everyone wants to do. And I always task our folks with determining if it's a nice to have or if it is a got to have. And if it's a got to have, I do everything that I can to get that for them so that their jobs are easier and your life as residents are, are easier. In December, agencies, the end of December, have to submit their request to us, and then the number crunching starts. So from January, February, and March, Mary, Celeste, and I spend a lot of time crunching the numbers on the budget. We have individual meetings with each of the departments so that they can come in and tell me why they need what they asked for. It's not just a blind request and I say yes, no. We sit down and we talk about it because that's what you are supposed to do when you're structuring a budget. Ultimately, I give options to council. I present those in late March, and council gives me guidance at that point on what tax rate they want to see that next year. I take that direction and I formulate the recommended budget, which under Virginia law has to be presented to council 60 days before the end of the current budget year. So by April 30th of each year, I have to present a balanced budget to council for their discussion. And then that starts the process of having the public hearings and having public input sessions on our proposed budget. Ultimately, the budget must be adopted by June 30th, and our usual calendar has the budget being adopted by the end of May each year. But as you can tell, it's a very lengthy process. For fiscal year 19, even though I had directed staff to be reasonable and realistic, which they were, we still had 106 million in request, which was $5.4 million over our prior fiscal year. We also had the same tax rate, so we had to go through and cut some things that we were not able to do. We had a increase in the city's health insurance rates for our employees. We elected to keep most of the cost on the city rather than pass it on to our employees. And we were fortunate to have a decrease in the retirement rates for our employees. We did not issue any debt, and we paid cash for all of our capital improvements in fiscal year 19, which is the same thing we did in 18. Many of you may have seen this graphic before. It comes out on the back of your, your real estate bill, but it shows you exactly how a dollar of your tax money is spent. 41 cents goes for education, 26 for public safety, 7 for general government, and general government includes city manager, city attorney, the independent auditor, human resources, the commissioner of the revenue, the treasurer, finance, IT, there are a number of things that fall under that. Public works, which includes street, storm drainage, the Loudoun Street Mall, refuse and recycling, and facilities maintenance. Judicial administration includes a circuit court, general district court, juvenile and domestic relations court services, the clerk of court, the sheriff, the courthouse security, there's a lot that factors into that. Health and welfare is another four cents, parks, recreation and culture, another four cents, capital improvements at four cents, debt at three cents, and community development at two cents. The city's org chart is really just a matter, a means of graphically showing how the city is organized. In reality, we are a team of one. We function extremely well together, and we have an amazing group of dedicated professionals that I am beyond honored to serve with. I'm not gonna call them all out here, but here's some pictures, some names with faces. You might see their names in the, pa in the paper sometime. You might see them out on the street. I hope if you do, you stop to talk to them. These folks, we could not 
serve you without their hard work and their dedication. Our constitutional officers are also an important part of providing services to our residents, and here they are. And finally, I want to go through the questions that were submitted before we open it up for your questions from the floor.